Hello everybody, good to see you here again. Now I am out on location here during the daylight, scouting out where I want to be shooting tonight. And I've come to this spot here, which I have shot at quite a few times in the past, and you may remember, but I'm looking for perspectives for the Milky Way Galactic Core to be rising up in the southeastern sky here in Australia. So beginning of March, I'm going to be out probably about two o'clock in the morning to get that core coming up in that place. Now, uh, this old barn here is a classic subject to shoot. It's nice and open. There's a good perspective over there. So I will probably come here tonight. Now, the reason I want to uh, bring this video to you guys is actually to try out a, a new lens. I've got my hands on one from Nikon Australia, and I want to give it a bit of a run through its paces tonight so um, that's why I'm out here now. Well it's really quite windy here at the moment so I'm hoping that that drops down before I come out here tonight. It is predicted to be a clear night with uh, I think maybe about a seven or eight miles per hour wind that's what the app's telling me but this is the lens that I want to try out. This is a Nikon 17-28 to f2.8 now I've managed to get my hands on this. It hasn't been easy. This is a loan from Nikon Australia. So you can see it's got the NPS sticker on the front of the lens. So I've got to send it back next week. So I've, I need a bit of time to get out here under the stars with it. So it's a 17 to 28 millimeter focal range on the full frame Nikon Z series cameras. And it's a much cheaper alternative to some of the other lenses on the market at the moment. So a lot of people think this is a Tamron lens which has been rebadged under the Nikon brand. Well maybe it is. It does look a fair bit like some of the other Tamron lenses that I've got and had in the past but I really like the feel of it. Uh, it's, it's lightweight and I particularly like the focal length range and that's the main reason that I contacted Nikon to try and get hold of this lens to give it a test for nightscape images in particular. Uh, the lens that it's probably closest to is the Nikon 14 to 24 f 2.8. Now I do have that lens and that's a very expensive lens. This is far cheaper and I think if it works out okay this will be a good alternative for those of you looking for a reasonably budget priced lens that is a native Nikon Z mount. So anyway what I might do now is just drive a little bit more around the countryside, see if there's any other compositions that I can come across that I can maybe fit into my shoot tonight. So let's go. So I've been driving around a fair bit just looking for locations in this district pretty close to the other place where I'm going to shoot and I've come across <clears throat> this, these old dead trees, there's a dam in there uh, right on the road here so I can just shoot it from that fence line no problem at all and it's facing in the right direction over there towards the east. So this could be a pretty good combination. So one of the things about this new lens, uh, at 17 millimeters on a full frame camera, it's quite wide, so I can fit a lot in. And I suppose that's one of the things I wanna test. And the other thing I'm gonna do is use my star tracker. So I'll be able to set that up here as well. Uh, no problem at all, facing down in the right direction down there. So I think this looks like a really good location, but I did find a couple of other locations, again, with dams. There's a lot of dams around here, it's farmland, uh, and there's a fair bit of water in most of them, which is a good thing for my nightscape. So I'm actually getting pretty excited. I'm looking forward to it. The weather's looking pretty good. I just hope the wind drops down because if it doesn't, it's gonna be a bit of a pain out here because it's pretty wide open spaces, so the wind just blows pretty freely. But anyway, 
I think I might, uh, I'll set my GPS so I can come back and find this place in the dark. And look, it's just off the highway, but you know, even so, I've learnt my lesson. I always set the GPS for my location scouting. So anyway, I'll see you guys later on tonight. All right, well here I am at the ruin again, middle of the night, it's after two o'clock, and the sky is absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful. And I've got my camera set up here with the 17 to 28 f2.8 lens. Just about to shoot this. You can see the Milky Way there over the top of the building, this tree. It's a really nice composition, and I've shot this before because it is such a nice composition. You can see a truck coming down the highway there. So that's about all you see at this time of night, trucks. There's usually quite a few of those around. Uh, so anyway, sometimes they add a little bit of nice light. Other times, well, it's got a massive big light bar on the front of that one. There, so I'm not too sure that one's gonna be much help to me. But uh, I'm gonna set up a little bit different tonight. A Couple of low level lights I'm using on this. And I'm going to mix low level lighting on this particular scene with some long exposures. So I might be looking at about some one minute exposures for the foreground here. Uh, and then I'm going to get the tracker out. So the tracker is gonna be set up just here. Beautiful clear space there to shoot some tracked skies. And as I've been doing recently, I'm probably just going to be shooting um, single tracked skies because I've been well, I've been really happy with how they've been coming out. But anyway, I'm just going to get in there, have a bit of a look. The, the building structure itself is just about falling over, so I'm not going to go inside that at all. Um, but I can shoot it just from the fence line here. I don't need to go in there. Uh, and yeah, it, oh, gee, it looks good up there. Milky Way, Galactic Core, what more would you want? All right, let's get into it. So you may have seen me do this before. So I've got my video light here, set up on a light stand, shining onto the side of the building. Uh, the camera is gonna be over there. So it's gonna be away on, a, it's about a 90 degree angle. And that's what I tend to wanna to always do because I don't want that light coming straight from the camera angle. And yeah, I've got two of these. So I've got, basically I'm cross lighting. I've got this one here. They're, by the way, they're set to their lowest possible amount. I've also got the orange gel. Um, so yeah, I don't, you probably can't see that, but I've got an orange gel on that. It's a full CTO on these Z96 video lights. I've got one here, one over there, cross lighting the scene. And I've done a couple of different exposures and I'm just gonna see what else I can get. Okay, well, I've got that shot. And I, actually, I think it looks fantastic. Uh, just trying that little bit different technique. You know, one of the reasons I do this is just to try new things. I don't want to be locked into the same settings every time I come out to shoot. You know, I think it's important to stretch it a bit. Now, I am trying a new lens, and that's the whole point of this video. But, and by the way, that lens seems to be performing beautifully. Uh, I can't fault it at this point. Uh, 17 millimeters is plenty wide enough to capture this whole scene here. So uh, I don't mind the focal length. I've, I've got, as I said earlier, I've got the 14 to 24 f 2.8, but this 17 to 28 millimeters is just that little bit further on. And um, you know, most of the time I don't need 14 millimeters. I, I think the range looks pretty good, but I won't know until I get back on the computer just how good the actual quality of the lens is. So 
Anyway, I've got another location to get to, so let's do that and we'll continue our journey. All right, well, I've taken quite a few images now, and currently I'm tracking, I'm doing the tracking. I've got my timer set, so when that goes off, I've got to click my remote control to uh, start another one. So it is a beautiful night. It's about 16 degrees Celsius. Oops, there it goes. Hang on. Yeah, so as I was saying, it's about 16 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's it's just gorgeous out here. It's just a slight breeze, and I think that's lowering the the temperature. Well, it feels a bit cool, but I don't think there's any problems with lens uh, fogging up, which is something that does happen quite a bit. But just looking at the car, oh, maybe, maybe there is a bit. So I'm going to have to have a look at that because that's something that is a major problem here, even in the middle of summer. So uh, we'll check how that goes. But look. It is going well. I've taken all these compositions. I think what I might do is continue this, just getting these track skies here. I need to look closely at these files. So I'll continue the rest of this video when I get back home and I've got a chance to look at these images on the computer so we can work out just how good this lens actually is. So I'll see you probably tomorrow. All right, well, it's good to see you back again. Now it's not the next day. It's in fact a couple of days later. Uh, last night I went out again, so I have been struggling with sleep catching up uh, today. <laughs> so essentially I haven't had the time or the mind to be able to even talk coherently. I hope I can now, but I went out last night shooting Aurora, believe it or not. It was a fantastic display all over the world and in my little humble little community here, which is nowhere near prime Aurora viewing, I was able to see some pretty good uh, sights. So, so I was out until about half past one last night. Uh, so I had to sleep in, but anyway, I'm getting back to this talk. Now I'm talking about the Nikon 17-28 f2.8. A lot of people have mentioned online that this is a Tamron lens that's made by Nikon or maybe made by Tamron, no one knows really. It does have the feel of Tamron. I've got a Tamron uh, 28 to 75, which is the Sony E mount, but I use this for some of my video work. And it looks similar. I would say it's, it's nicer, but this is the earlier version. So perhaps it is made by Tamron, I wouldn't know. But you know, the thing that really matters, to be honest, is not who makes it, but how good is it? And so that's what we're talking about. I've had a bit of a chance to do some editing on some of the images I took the other night. And by the way, I was really pleased with how this lens performed. It handles well, uh, it's small. In fact, this weighs 400 grams. So it's not overly heavy at all. Uh, this one I showed you a minute ago, this is about 500 grams. Uh, some of the other lenses that compare in this focal range would be this one, this is a Lauer. 15 millimeter f2 aperture with a native Nikon Z mount. That's heavier, a little bit smaller in actual size, but heavier in weight. This is about 500 grams as well. And the only other one that's anywhere near the focal range is this, which is the native Nikon Z 14 to 24 f2.8. This is a lot heavier than all of these other lenses and considerably more expensive. So just talking about cost for a minute, uh, this uh, new one, the Nikon 17 to 28 f2.8, here in Australia, it's pretty pricey at about $1,700. I'm sure you could shop around and get it cheaper than that. Uh, this is probably nearly twice that. This is about $3,200. So massive difference. Uh, it's, it's a similar range. This is 17 to 28, this is 14 to 24. Now you would expect this lens to be far better than this one, uh, but you know, I don't know if it's twice as expensive better. Anyway, we will continue on our little discussion. So as far as the Lauer is concerned, this 15 
uh, millimeter f2 this lens absolutely slaughters this one as far as quality is concerned there's a lot of aberrations in this this lens is built well but i would only use it for time lapse um, it's got way too much aberration in the corners uh, stars are not dots in the corner now i know other people have reviewed this lens and come out with fairly positive outcomes so you can only go by your own experience but this lens well, let's have a look at it. Now, I shot this either at 17 mil or 28 mil, so at the extreme ends of the zoom range. And by the way, when you look at this lens, when you zoom it, it doesn't extend. And that's something I like in a lens. So it basically um, just looks exactly the same. The other thing about this lens is it's fully autofocus. So uh, this lens, this lower, is all fully manual. So for nightscapes, it doesn't matter. But if you're shooting daytime stuff or video, it matters a lot and this lens performs really well so out of all these lenses i've showed you here this is the lightest by a long way now as far as the images go uh, and i'm going to show you some now just to give you some ideas so this lens does display a, a reasonable amount of vignetting in the corners that's not uncommon especially with fairly ultra wide angle lenses fairly easy to correct in post so i don't see that as a major problem it does have a little bit of coma or aberrations in the corners so the stars are not exactly pin sharp in the corners but i think a lot of other lenses are far worse than this so i would classify that as acceptable remember i'm shooting this wide open at f 2.8 for all of these examples there is some chromatic aberration as well but i would say that pretty much all of these lenses have chromatic aberration and that is something that's pretty easy also to get rid of in the editing process so as you look at the images i think you can see uh, this lens performs pretty well at both uh, 17 millimeters and 28 millimeters now i shot these shots on the tracker so it was um, it shouldn't have any uh, movement as far as star trailing is concerned because i was on a star tracker for the whole time corner sharpness is in my mind quite acceptable for a lens in this range i don't think it's very far behind the 14 to 24 at twice the price if you're looking for a lens for the Nikon Z mount, then this one actually performs really, really well for nightscape and low light photography. I actually shot some of my Aurora images last night with this lens as well. The other thing I noticed about it when I'm shooting out there in the field is that it doesn't have extreme distortion at 17 millimeters. Now, some of you are probably gonna to say to me, well, 17 millimeters is not that wide. Well, it's pretty wide. I mean, my 14 to 24 has a lot more distortion at 14 mil. I used to have a Samyang 14 millimeter f 2.8, and to be honest, never again, but that had enormous distortion all over the place in all sorts of funny ways. This, however, doesn't. I think it's pretty good. So if you're shooting straight lines on the edges, you want a lens that keeps those lines as straight as possible. Now, I know we're defying the laws of optics, by uh, not bending because the lens is around and all those other things. But anyway, as far as distortion goes, I like this lens. That's one of the reasons, by the way, that I shoot often at 20 millimeters or above because it has a lesser effect of distortion with straight edges, particularly when you're close to the edge of the frame. In fact, that windmill Aurora shot that I showed you uh, was shot with this 17 millimeter lens and I was pretty happy with the fact that that windmill doesn't look like it's leaning into the middle of the frame even though it is towards the edge of that panorama. So I'm going to show you the images that I shot now and you can make up for your own mind what you think about this lens.
All right, so summing up, I think this is a fantastic focal length range for people wanting to shoot nightscape photography. 17 millimeters is plenty wide enough on a full frame camera to capture as much real estate as you want. And then you can, of course, you can zoom into 28 millimeters, which is also starting to get in a little bit, but not too much telephoto. And I think it's a really practical and well thought out zoom range. So all in all, yeah, I absolutely recommend this lens. If you're looking at a lens for the Nikon Z mount system, then I reckon this is one that you should definitely consider. I'm not sure what the prices are in other countries around the place. I think it's overpriced here in Australia, but that's common here, we get a lot of that. So for those of you over in the US or perhaps in the UK, I think you'll probably find this lens is far cheaper. And if it is, this is definitely worth the investment. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate that every time. So I'll look forward to seeing you in my next adventure somewhere out there under the stars. You have a fantastic week. I'll see you later.